guys, welcome back to another episode of the Swedish History 101 series! Wow! Today's episode is not going to be long, but it will take us a few years into the future. Not the actual future now, but the future from where we left off, where Gustav Vasa was being kind of psycho. And I'm sorry to say it won't stop there. In 1560, Gustav Vasa dies. Rest in peace. And Vasa did have a bunch of kids, but his firstborn son, Erik XIV, is the one who takes over the throne when his father dies. And during his time on the throne, Erik focuses a lot on culture. He lives life as a pimp. After some time, he finds a girl named Karin Månsdotter, and they get married and kind of live happily ever after. Erik has a brother, and this brother's name is Johan III. And Johan III also finds a girlfriend, but this isn't too popular because this girl is the youngest child of Sigismund I from Poland. Dun, dun, dun! And her name is Katarina Jagiellonica. And the king Erik is so pissed off that his brother Johan marries the enemy so he locks him up, because that's what you do when you get pissed at someone. You lock them up somewhere and throw away the key. But in this case, he did not actually throw away the key. After a long time of brutal, brutal leadership with killings and burnings, Erik starts to go nuts, as if he was nuts already. And for some reason, I mean, he clearly went nuts, because he released his brother Yuan from his imprisonment. And of course, as we all know, that is a big, big mistake. Don't lock people up and then let them out and think that everything will be as it was before you lock them up. Because that's probably not gonna happen. Johan and his other brother Karl have had enough. So they decide to take the throne from their brother Erik. So after they've done this, Johan III takes the throne from his brother. But as I've mentioned, the psycho gene is in the family. And Johan is just not a whole lot better than his brother. People are dying all over the place. In 1592, Yuan finally dies, and his son Sigismund takes over. Remember, Yuan III was the one who wed Sigismund I's youngest daughter, Katarina Jagiellonica. And Sigismund, aka Yuan's son, he in turn inherited Pol inherited it. <laughs> he inherited Poland from his mother a few years earlier, and he's doing a really good job, actually. Sigismund is very religiously tolerant and pretty chill as a leader. He does take good care of the civilians, which is the key in most cases to being a good leader. But oh no! Psycho number three is here. Karl, the third brother of Johan and Erik, he's just been chilling since they overthrew Erik and took his throne. But he is now ready to strike. At the Battle of Stongebro, Karl's troops beat Sigismund. And after this, Sigismund takes his crap and heads back to Poland, where he is still the leader. Karl now becomes Karl the Ninth of Sweden. During this time, Sweden fights a lot, a lot of wars that are very expensive. And we lose, 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 lose. In 1611, Karl's son, Gustav Adolf, takes over. And this could be the start of something new. It feels so right to be here with Gustav Adolf. Oh. And now, looking in your eyes, I feel in my heart, feel in my heart. The start of something new. But to hear all about the new start, you'll have to watch next week's episode. I hope you guys liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe to get my links below to keep up to date on everything I do, including this series. Until next time, have a super duper one. I'll see you guys later. Bye!